Kerry Chabalowski, the president of the Susquehanna Symphony Orchestra. And I want to thank all of you for coming tonight to help us begin this year-long celebration of the 250th anniversary of Hartford County. But before I get started, the usual reminder, please turn off your electrical devices or at least silence them. Tonight's program has been designed especially to highlight some of the wonderful characteristics of our county, including geography, culture, history, and music that's been contributed to the world of music by our county. I want to give some special thanks to people who helped to make this concert happen and other concerts as well. And to begin with, I'd like to thank Richardson's Flor Floral and Gift Shop for helping to provide us with the flowers tonight. Coffee Coffee for once again being out in the lobby to provide us with some of their delicious coffee, tea, and treats. And during intermission, I hope you go out there and visit their table. And while you're out in the lobby, if you haven't already noticed, and I suspect you have, we have a lot of local artists and authors out there. So please take some time to go over and talk with them and see what they have and explore some of their, their work. And another special thanks goes to the Hartford County Historical Society for helping to get this concert underway, as well as two people in particular, and that's Jackie Seneschal and Jim Krismer. And because tonight is really just the very first event that I'm aware of for this year-long anniversary, uh, I encourage you to go out to the lobby and visit the Historical Society's table, because you can find there a whole plethora of wonderful events coming up over the next 12 months. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised at what you find. So I would like to thank some people who helped to provide the finances we need, which include support by grants from the Hartford County Office of Economic Development, the Maryland State Arts Council, and the Maryland Arts Council through the Hartford County Cultural Arts Board, and we're very thankful for that support. And finally, I want to thank tonight all the narrators we have and the composers who've contributed to the music of this concert, uh, as well as the soloists who you'll, whom you'll hear later tonight, and all the donors and volunteers who may help to make these concerts happen and bring us the beautiful and hopefully inspiring music. And I think you will find it inspiring tonight. I've heard it, it's wonderful. So with that, uh, it's my great pleasure and my honor to welcome tonight's first narrator, Hartford Colony's executive, Mr. Bob Cassily. Thank you, Gary, and thank you, Sheldon. Good to see everybody. Thank you all for being here. I want to thank the members of the orchestra for what I know will be a fantastic concert, because it usually is. Uh, I want to welcome the audience to the, the first of many celebrations this year honoring the 250th anniversary of our beloved county. Um, there's a, we have such a rich heritage of music in Hartford County, and, and the Sesqu no, no group epitomizes that more than the Susquehanna Symphony Orchestra, um, but certainly we have the community bands and the youth orchestra as well. Um, I want to, uh, again, thank all the members of the orchestra and Sheldon for, for your your performance here tonight. Uh, tonight, we have a special treat. We're gonna open up uh, to, to the concert uh, with a piece uh, composed by Richard Mouts. Um, it's a Hartford Fanfare that was composed especially for this evening's occasion. Richard and his wife, Marie, are recent transplants to Hartford County, moved here recently from, from South Carolina, uh, where uh, Richard is a uh, started as a distinguished professor of emeritus at the University of South Carolina. And Sheldon, take it away. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you.
Wait for the light to go on. Uh, it's now my pleasure to introduce to you Mr. Terry Troyer of WHFC. Good evening. My narration deals with the 1812 and Civil Wars. America's two most notable wars of the 19th century impacted Hofford County quite differently. The dramatic invasion of Haverty Grace in May of 1813 was a sad awakening to the reality of an international conflict. And the failed British assault on Baltimore the following year provided the opportunity to regain local pride, especially given the heroic performance of John Adams Webster of Cresswell, or Cresswell excuse me, and Haverty Grace's John Rogers. The situation of the Civil War was wholly different. Harford County was a border county and a border state. Its population in 1860 included free and enslaved persons. In all, its population totaled 23,415 individuals, a number that included approximately 3,600 free persons of color and 1,800 enslaved persons, some of whom were purchased here in Harford County. In the presidential election in Harford County that year, the candidate with the largest number of votes was the incumbent vice president, John C. Breckinridge, the pro-slavery secessionist candidate of the Southern Democratic Party. The candidate with the second greatest number was Senator Stephen Douglas, a moderate Northern Democrat who opposed secession but believed slavery should be permitted to expand in the West if a territory's people favored its existence. As a Republican of that era, Abraham Lincoln ran on a platform supporting the Union and opposing the spread of slavery in the territories. He took no stand on slavery where it was already legal. Locally, Lincoln finished a distant third. The number of Harford County men in the military between 1861 and 1865 is but an approximation. Researchers estimate the number of local soldiers in the Confederate Army as perhaps as high as 200, while acknowledging the number would be higher if the state of Maryland has seceded. The figure for county men in the Army of the United States reached perhaps 2,000, but over 250 serving in the United States Colored Troops. In the end, the United States prevailed on the field of battle, but at a horrible cost in the lives of soldiers. Traditionally, the most accurate and accepted estimate has been that of 620,000 Americans died. The number of deaths for men from Harford County has yet been proved impossible to determine. The orchestra will now per perform Skirmish at Haverty Grace, remembering Harford's role in the War of 1812. Then Wendy Boldell and Dennis Herzog will come to the front of the stage to lead the orchestra in a Shokin Farewell, a piece made popular in Ken Burns's The Civil War. Lastly, we change gears for Benny Russell's rendition of the spiritual Steal Away, with Benny joining the orchestra for the performance. Thank you.
Next, we invite an old friend of the Susquehanna Symphony in Harford County to the stage, Mr. Benny Russell, who arranged Steal Away. Here he is.
It's now my pleasure to welcome Command Sergeant Major Michael Conaty to the stage from Aberdeen Proving Ground. Thank you for coming. Okay, now the light's on, so we'll try it one more time again. Thank you for the introduction, and thank you for the invitation. For more than a century, the Edgewood area and the Aberdeen area of Aberdeen Proving Ground provided the lifeblood of Harford County. After U.S. entry into World War I, the United States Army urgently needed a new site to test munitions. And after two presidential proclamations and an act of Congress, the Army officially took possession of 35,000 acres of upland and 34,000 acres of tidal and swampland, establishing Aberdeen Proving Ground on October 20th, 1917. After the war ended in November of 1918, APG's mission shifted to the research and developmental testing of many different military munitions and chemical protective equipment. During World War II and later conflicts, APG's mission continued to grow as the military's go-to location for the development and testing for the unique challenges the military faced wherever it fought across the globe. During the 2010s, base realignment and closure saw personnel from Watertown, Massachusetts, Fort Belvoir, Virginia, Brook City, Texas, Fort Monmouth, New Jersey, Redstone Arsenal, Alabama, and Fort Huachuca, Arizona moved to APG, creating many new positions and solidifying APG's position as the preeminent research, development, testing, and engineering location for the United States Army. As a result, APG provides more jobs than any other employer in Hartford County and more than most other employers in the state of Maryland. APG's support for Hartford County and the nation transcends research and development for military equipment. It provides a safe haven for several endangered species, including bald eagles, so that they can live and multiply. APG scientists also developed a reactive mat in a collaborative effort with the U.S. Geological Survey to be used to protect the Chesapeake Bay from contaminated groundwater runoff. In closing, as the nation's most experienced proving ground, APG will continue to prove time and time again how essential the installation is to Harford County and its communities we serve. The orchestra will now perform Maestro Barrow's composition, This Will Defend, which was composed in 2017 to commemorate the 100th anniversary of Aberdeen Proving Ground. The composition includes the Army Hymn, God of Our Fathers, and the Army Song. Thank you.
That was fun. <laughs> uh, that's okay. We'll have to turn it on for, for Chris. So hopefully you enjoyed intermission. A lot of wonderful artists and coffee coffees out there. We, we love our partnerships, and one of them is presently with Slate Farm Brewery. If you go to Slate Farm Brewery, you can have a Susquehanna Symphony beer. I know. <laughs> it's, it's a wheat beer with guava and passion fruit, and I'm usually not a beer guy with like guava and passion fruit, but Jim Shrake says it's good. <laughs> Barbara and I had some, it's tasty, yeah. It's really good. So we, we really love our partnerships. So to start the second half, I invite Chris Potts of the Historical Society to come to the podium and tell you a little bit our, about our geography. Thank you, Chris. Harford County comprises a total area of 527 square miles that are bounded by the Mason-Dixon Line to the north, the Susquehanna River to the east, the Chesapeake Bay to the southeast, and the Gunpowder River to the west. Our slice of Maryland straddles a border separating the rolling hills of the Piedmont Plateau in the north and the flatlands of the Atlantic Coastal Plain in the south. The split generally parallels the old Philadelphia Road and Route 40. The coastal plain to the south consists largely of sparsely treed rolling flatlands described by historian Christopher Weeks as a marshy mix of sand and water lazily washed by the tidal bush and gunpowder rivers. That land gradually drops to sea level along the Chesapeake Bay and its tributaries. The Piedmont, by comparison, comprises about 80% of the county and features undulating forested heartlands, rising from about 200 to nearly 800 feet above sea level in that northwestern region. Prior to European settlement, Native American peoples utilized lands and waterways for hunting, fishing, and agricultural purposes. From the 18th century through the establishment of the county in 1773 and into the 20th century, dozens of fast flowing streams, notably Deer Creek and Winters and Bynum Runs, supported a diverse economy of general and dairy farming, orcharding, and milling. Today, the geography of the county provides vast recreational opportunities. The Susquehanna and the Chesapeake provide boating, sailing, and fishing. Creeks and parks abound with canoeists and kayakers, hikers and wildlife enthusiasts, and birders seeking everything from eagles to orioles love Harford County as do, increasingly, bicyclists and walkers. Not surprisingly, it was the land and the waters of the county that inspired George Van Bibber's 1964 design of the official Harford County seal. The orchestra will now perform two works that recall aspects of our geography. Susquehanna, was composed by composer Kyle Smith for the 40th anniversary of the Susquehanna Symphony Orchestra. Copeland's Down a Country Lane makes us think of the many lovely country lanes we have in our county. And we wish to thank those who have shared their photos of their favorite country lanes.
stage Dr. Kim Davis of Harford Community College to uh, talk a little bit about education in the county, and then we're going to perform Richard Johnson's premier piece. Harvard County has a well-established reputation for the quality of the schools. Families, couples, and businesses from near and far move here for the opportunity to send their children to our public, private, church-related, or non-sectarian institutions. Residents take pride in associating themselves with their children's schools. Modern public education began in Harford County in 1867 with the adoption of a state constitution that required each subdivision to establish a thorough and efficient system of free public schools. By 1900, Harford had nearly 7,000 students in 162 one or two room schools. As the numbers, ages, directives, and needs of students expanded, the school board began to restructure local community schools into consolidated schools and eventually into high schools. By 1954, Harford County had four modern regional public high schools and two consolidated schools for African American students. In 1957, the county founded Harford Junior College, a school for post-secondary education in a wing of the Bel Air High School building. Its popularity soon led to the establishment of a far more expansive curriculum and campus outside the town under the name Harford Community College. By 1970, two private church-related high schools came into being to offer an even greater range of choices to interested students and parents. Sadly, as with other states south of the Mason-Dixon line, Harvard's public schools were segregated. This ended in the mid-1960s in the litigiously littered 11 years after the Supreme Court's ruling that segregation was inherently unconstitutional. As segregation gave way to integration, educational opportunities for the county's African-American students improved. The passage of time brought a greater number of families, demographic diversity, attention to individual needs, and change in the skills required for success in a modern society. Harford County Public Schools responded by increasing staff, employing specialists, promoting professional development, and acquiring ample amounts of modern equipment, in addition to remodeling or building new schools and expanding the number of high schools to 10. Likewise, the numbers of independent schools with nearly 4,000 students increased and flourished, providing parents with an expanding choice of educational philosophy and expected outcomes. As Harvard County moves toward its tricentennial, its residents do so with continued anticipation of successfully meeting the challenges of the mid-21st century. Independent school trustees and the newly restructured Board of Education will build on the past and offer new solutions to current issues for the betterment of society and the needs of approximately 41,000 pupils who will likely occupy their schools. Next, the orchestra will, be form, will perform over a field at Churchville by HCC's own Richard Johnson. This atmospheric composition employs the orchestra string and percussion sections.
It's my pleasure to welcome our last narrator to the stage, Miss Grace Colwood. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us for the celebration of 250 years of Harford County. As we bring the concert to a close, I reflect on Harford County's rich history of recognizing and honoring the ways in which we, as humans, express our most personal thoughts, hopes, dreams, and wishes for ourselves, for our loved ones, and for our neighbors. This is shown through service to causes we so deeply believe in, through the arts and through faith. We've heard a lot tonight about Harford County's legacy. I believe Harford County's future is bright. If someone were to ask me to describe where I grew up, I'd certainly talk about Harford County's appreciation for the arts. Not only is this apparent through tonight's program, but it's obvious through our county's many festivals that feature artists and artisans, such as the Darlington Apple Festival, the Jazz and Blues Festival in Havre de Grace, and through our concerts, such as the annual community ensemble concerts and the various school programs in which our students make music for their school communities. It's been said that a true artist is not one who is inspired, but, um, but is one who inspires. Thankfully, our county is blessed with a variety of organizations that appeal to a variety of needs. These organizations are led by involved leaders who are truly artistic geniuses. I know firsthand that nonprofits often must harness and embrace their most creative energies to achieve their missions. Harvard's population is filled with compassionate people united around causes that seek to build community and promote harmony. I admire the passion within our community, and it is evident to me that at the center of Harford County is unity. As a young nonprofit leader, I admire Harford County's selfless support of youth who believe in community service. For over a decade, my youth-led organization has shown countless displays of generosity. Whether it's joining us for stuffing parties where we pack brunch bags for children experiencing food insecurity, helping us provide Easter goodies for hospitalized children, supporting our initiatives for children aging out of foster care, or helping to bring happiness to children experiencing homelessness, our county has helped us shine bright, a, light, a bright light in areas of great need. Thank you, Harford County, for supporting not only me and my organization, but the numerous organizations and businesses that work to help some of the most vulnerable populations in our area. I have great hope for our future, we are, after all, the predecessor to the official Declaration of Independence of America. Harford County is a county of trailblazers, so I can only expect that this same driven spirit lives in my generation and those to come after me. This county will raise the next great scientist or public servant or world-renowned artist. It is because of the past and present of Harford County that I can have unwavering hope for its future. 
The orchestra will bring our concert to a close by performing three compositions. First, you will hear composer James Lee III's Towards a Greater Light for String Orchestra. Lee, who lives in Edgewood and teaches at Morgan State, is one of the most sought after composers of orchestral music in the United States today. Next, the orchestra will welcome two Harford natives, Kevin Bozinski and David Murray, to the stage for Maestro Bear's A Suite of Sweets, a light composition for trumpet, trombone, and orchestra. And lastly, Harvard native Mary Pollins will join the orchestra for Harvard composer, composer Stacey Zierick's forward-looking and hopeful I Choose the Mountain. Thank you for attending this evening's event.
we now welcome to the stage, which will take a minute to set up. Kevin Bozinski and uh, David Murray. I don't know if that stand's gonna work, we'll see. Okay, we're working on it. This composer, he just asked for too many mutes. That's the problem. And there's a couple of trumpets and... Isn't this fun musical stands? So, um, I, I, I started this orchestra like 45 years ago. And, I don't know how many more years I'll be able to do it, so I, I wrote a list of people I wanted to uh, play, work with as soloists, and Kevin Bozinski and David Murray's names came up. They're Harford County natives. They're C. Milton Wright graduates. They were my orchestra uh, students. Scott Charnetska's here, and I think Felicia Martin's here. They were the, they were the band uh, teachers. Brian Fola started Kevin, Stefan Antwarg in the orchestra taught David, so uh, it's great to have them back. Let's welcome Kevin and David to the stage.
As we bring our concert to a close and as the folks of Susquehanna Symphony help us, thanks so much for coming out to our concert. Continuing with Grace's comments about hope and moving forward, we will welcome to the stage in a minute. It's really tricky with all that. And they read off of iPads, so. Carrie doesn't want to drop the iPads, I think, yeah. I don't think that's in our insurance. Um, so I'd like to thank, just in case I, I forget, back in 2009, Stacy Zyrick brought this piece to me, which I orchestrated, and I'm not sure where Stacy is. There Stacy is. Thanks so much, Stacy, for sharing your music with us. So uh, to finish the concert, I'd like to bring to the stage uh, Miss Mary Pollins, who will sing Stacy's work, I Choose the Mountain. Thanks so much.
was meant for me. I asked, please pass this burden to another. The answer rang out loud and clear, this is your destiny. Those who serve 